how do you get managers to practice on a day-to-day -day basis being more collaborative? And I would submit to you that one very powerful way of doing that is to teach them some skills about how they interact with people on a daily basis. And the skill that I, was, I would submit to you that really seems to be very effective in doing that is the skill that's increasingly being referred to as coaching. When we in business talk about wanting you to be a better coach, what are we talking about? It isn't that. In fact, it's probably the exact polar opposite of that. And so the practices that most what we think of as athletic coaches, particularly to younger people, uh, would be just totally contraindicated. Now, this, let me just quick aside, is what the high school or junior high school coach does appropriate for the situation that they're in? Yes, yes, these are young people, they're learning, they need to be taught lots of new information, it's appropriate. Is it appropriate for a manager and a, and a bright young MBA coming out of a major university well, maybe, maybe not quite so appropriate. It's driven by different situations and different people involved. So the thing that I would like to have you kind of walk away from today's session would be this. Being a good coach in business does not mean giving advice, does not mean telling people what to do, does not mean, does not mean being directive, does not mean micromanaging in the way that we think of in terms of a junior high school or a high school coach. To the contrary, it really helps, it really means good business coaching is about helping people to expand their awareness of what's going on around them, helping them to kind of find the answers from within themselves and to discover their own solutions. And finally, it helps, it, it means helping that person to be accountable for truly implementing the decisions that they make in the long run. So it's a totally different definition of coaching from the one that we're kind of typically accustomed to. But for me, I guess the great power of that is that it has an, an enormous effect because it brings back, let me go back to this slide here, it brings back to the middle the, the behavior of the manager who is being autocratic, it pulls that person back into the middle. And similarly, the person who tends to be very benign and hands off and not involved, it really has them being kind of much more involved and engaged in, in, the, in the whole leadership practice. If we can get people to do this, it will truly transform the organization. One of the most haunting uh, stories I ever heard was about a young man who came home to visit his father. He was working in a plant in Michigan where his father had spent his entire life as a, as a factory worker. And the young man comes home to visit dad and he begins talking about what's happening in this factory. And he tells dad about the fact that, that they've now organized the plant into self-managing work teams. And that these teams have responsibility for ordering their own raw materials. They talk with the customer. They organize their own work processes. They make selection decisions about who should join the team in case somebody leaves. They're given a great deal more latitude. And as he's kind of going on and on talking about this new, this environment that he's working in, he looks at his father and he sees tears just welling up in his eyes. And his father kind of muttering to himself and saying, we tried to tell them. We knew how to run the plant better than they did. They would never listen. And so I think the good news is that we've seen some real transition in corporate America. And we're seeing these kinds of practices become much more commonplace. And it does result in people growing and learning.